Our pleasure. Seriously. Yeah. So, like, this is Ernie. We're gonna get this right. Oh yeah. What last last couple of times we've done the podcast, I've uh, always like for some reason I've introduced him as me and me as him. I'm not sure. It doesn't make any sense. Uh, Listen, when you're in the mix, sometimes it gets confusing. You know what I mean? Yeah, but the problem is like I've been in the business <laughs> for a while. Like, it doesn't make any sense why like we uh, we're messing it up. So, Ernie, what are you doing over there? I don't know. It's doing double tracks, but I can fix that. Oh, come on, okay. Ernie. Little yeah, bit, I know. Little. Dropping the ball See, he, here. Yeah, exactly. What's going I don't on? know. I don't know why it's doing that. <laughs> so where where are you from, Adam? Uh, I'm from Montreal, Canada. No, that, yeah, me too. Uh, no, I'm not from Montreal. We're also from Canada. <laughs> we're, we're, we're Really? <laughs> yeah, no way. <laughs> I couldn't tell. <laughs> were, were you born in Canada? I mean, <laughs> were you born were in you Montreal? Were you born in Canada? Yeah, of very, Canada? Much, very much so. Uh, all the partners at One Bone, we were all... Uh, Born and raised in Montreal. That's awesome. Yeah. Man. So I didn't know that's where the genesis of the company started. Um, so I guess we're going to kick right into it. So Yeah. I, I thought we were already in. No, no, no. We already are. I'm just like, I mean, like, we're going <laughs> to kick right into it as in, like, I'm going to, I want to ask. So everything, everything, how everything started and uh, maybe, maybe I just want to get a little. So you're the vice president. CEO or what was your what's your title? What's your official title? Uh, I'm more of the CMO. Let's call okay. it chief okay. marketing officer. Basically, take care of all of the branding and uh, the digital space. Um, yeah. And then my other partners, uh, Sam is CEO, and he takes care of uh, really oversees logistics and customer service, which is a huge part of our business. Mm. And uh, Matt, my other partner, is um, he takes care of all of the production, all of the manufacturing. Yeah. And uh, th- so those two guys are brothers and their father, Michael, uh, he basically like oversees and consults everything, make sure we're uh, we're staying in line from an inventory and financial standpoint. And uh, I don't know if you've ever wow. seen The Wolf of Wall Street, but he's like yes, George sir. Belfort's dad there, you know, so it's OK. It's OK. Mix. Get reeling everybody in when things get a little bit crazy. Exactly. OK. okay. Is everybody in Montreal? Yeah, we're yeah. all here, man. Man, uh, yeah, I know you're the face of the brand because okay, I gotta start. I gotta start the podcast off with the story of how I first yeah. heard about your brand and actually messaged you. I don't know if you remember this. I don't even know if it was you. So yeah. I bought Instagram on my personal account, and your ad comes up. And I was going through a time where I was like, you know what? I'm trying to lose weight. Like mm. I've always been a bigger guy, and I was like, <laughs> I saw the ad in like in a joking way because Ernie and I always kind of mess with people who try to like send us stuff like. We get it's, a lot of. It's a game to see who yeah. can out, we, outwit the other one. Yeah, we really get a lot of oh. like for the podcast. We get a lot of people like, "Hey, you want to make more money? Hey, this is just like okay." So yeah, now we're just Russian prostitutes. Now we just mess with them. Anyway, yeah, yeah, yeah. wasn't trying to mess with you guys, but you sent me this thing, and I messaged the ad back and said, "Hey, man, you guys got to leave me know, leave me alone. I'm trying not to be fat." And, and then <laughs> I don't know who messaged. Someone was like, "Hey, man." Someone messaged me back was like, "Dude." Don't worry. We're just here for you. We want to give you some clothing product that will help you with your lifestyle. Um, you know, that kind of thing. Hang on, Ernie. Jeez, Lee, he's so picky about where I sit. Um, <laughs> so, so that was kind of like how I heard about the brand and I messaged you. But it was the funny part was is that someone messaged me back. It was like, mm-hmm. dude, no worries, man. Like, <laughs> I didn't think I'd get anything back. So, yeah, I mean, now, now uh, our business has been growing like crazy. So it's, it's a lot harder to like reach out to all those comments as much as possible, but as yeah. much as possible, we try to because, you know, it's something like that that just sort of sparks a connection and, and an interaction. And that's ultimately like what what we're here for, you know, like we're we're really proud that we're building this very cool community. Mm-hmm. And uh, it it often starts with like uh, a, a quirky comment like that, or even a hater in the comments. You know, <laughs> there's a lot there's a lot of love in the comments, but a lot of hate <laughs> in the comments as well. So you know, we try and uh, manage that as much as possible. And and a lot of those guys who reach out hating uh, end up becoming some of our most loyal customers. So yeah, it's, I, it's fun. I, I don't. I hope that didn't come across as being hate. I just no, was like, no, just, not at all. It was just funny because I was just like I was in the middle of like a journey, just like you know, just eating better, trying to do some uh, like intermittent fasting, just drink, yeah. drinking some more water. And I just I was just always afraid of like what comes up on my feed, and it's just like you know, on my feed all of a sudden this shirt comes up for like a bigger guy, for a guy who like can't find clothes like that, which is like you know I've run into that problem all the time, sure. like trying to find something that looks cool, something that fits nice, and I was just like. 
come on, really? Like, you know, how, how did the weight loss journey go, by the way? Uh, so at that time I was like 265. Okay. Um, and now I'm in like, uh, like a healthier range. Like I'm in like two, like the, like two twenties. Oh, amazing. Uh, always, always poking at around 230, you know, just trying to keep it clean. Uh, my optimal weight would be like 220. I, I feel, mm. I feel the best there. I can do more. I can always feel it when I, when I was that weight, like I was 260, I was sleeping like garbage and, yeah. uh, I wasn't like my back was always hurting. Sure. I was carrying around like an extra like thirty pounds that I don't really want to carry around. So you make and old it, man noises. Yeah, yeah. like yeah. Like you, uh, when you get up, you. Uh, 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 I mean, I feel forever. like no matter what shape you're in, by the time you hit thirty, you're gonna make those old man noises no matter yeah, what, yeah. you know. But yeah, uh, pains what, now. Like, so I what did you do like... to lose the weight? So I just ate, just eating clean. I uh, got rid of sugar, got rid of salt, got rid of bread. Uh, I took a break from a lot of the beer I was drinking. Uh, oh, yeah. Like for a while there, I'm like, if you, I don't, yeah, you definitely don't follow my main Instagram, but I'm kind of like a craft beer connoisseur uh, where I just drink a lot of craft beer. It so just means I, he drinks a lot. That's all it means. No, no, no. Just like a Listen, couple times a week. You could give your craft brewery a plug right now. I mean, we could get them early. I, I've heard the podcast. I know. Oh, <laughs> you have heard the podcast? Oh, that's yeah. A, what is it? Ma what's the brewery? Maker, there? Weightmaker Brewery, Weight bro. Maker. Yeah. yeah. Those are the homies. Sounds yeah. delicious. Oh, cool. If you ever come to Ontario, you ever come to the Toronto area, you hit us up. We'll take you over a beer. You got to come down and. Well, I'll tell you, we actually, I think in April, I think we're going to be coming down because uh, our buddy is a wrestler. And I think that we're going to be promoting a Greek Town wrestling event, um, which I think is going to be happening at Ryerson in April. So we will definitely be coming down and doing something in Toronto, which uh, okay. then we will definitely link up. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. It's, so we're about... A, maybe like a good 45 minute 40, drive depending on traffic from Toronto. where are you guys we're in cambridge okay cool represent in cambridge absolutely um, but if you guys are in the area you just message me and we'll hit up the brewery yeah yeah, yeah for sure laurel street north get there off we your go. ass and fill your glass shout out to laurel <laughs> <laughs> we made that we made that yeah we made that like, I, I don't know if they've heard it no they have <laughs> i hope they like it yeah so that's the funny <laughs> thing about our ads is like we just kind of make them up and then yeah, we yeah. send them to the people and they're like oh well, yeah, that's cool. You guys are doing great. You know, what I mean? it works great, man. So, you guys. So, were you at the like? At the, I always say this word. Like, I don't repeat myself. The Genesis. That's such a weird way to. Were you at the beginning? Yeah, were you at the start? Were you at the front of the, of the whole, Bible? That whole start of the company and like, were you there at the beginning, thinking of the whole process? I mean, my name is Adam, so I'll let you do the math. No. Oh! <laughs> No, but uh, <laughs> it's not in the eve of the company. Yeah, exactly. Terrible. Terrible. Hey, listen. Uh, so, yeah, yeah, we definitely I, I part of the reason why this all started was I was on tour um, DJing, uh, had a big following back in the day and I was touring across North America and um, I couldn't find a T-shirt that fit me well and look good. So, like, if it if it was like stylish then it didn't fit. And if it fit, then it wasn't stylish. So uh, I started custom making my own t-shirts. I had a, uh, yeah, I had a friend's mom who's a seamstress and I went to a fabric store and I just bought like what I thought would be good on stage. And I started to wear my own custom made t-shirts and I was doing that for about two years or so. And uh, my current partners now at One Bone, who are good family friends of mine, we were at an event together and I walked in wearing one of these t-shirts and they have huge experience in the fashion industry. And they basically asked me like, where'd you get your t-shirt? I said, I made it myself. And then they said, call me tomorrow. And uh, we hit the ground running and, and they were the ones who identified that there was this major gap in the market for stylish fitting well clothing for you know what we like to call as the hard to fit man let's say the husky um, gentleman, thick yeah. Boys. yeah yeah well and, and now we're even size inclusive so it's not just the husky gentleman it's it's yeah. everybody ranging from everybody like oh. to 8xl so yeah whoa uh, yeah 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 it's uh, and, and we're always we're always trying to grow this size range so uh that's really how it all started and uh here we are it's like almost four years later and, and it's popping. Yeah. Well, it sounds like, so your face is on my feed because like, I'm always <laughs> like, I'll like it, you know, and then, but you're always coming up. You guys came out with like 
crew necks. So you, like that was a cool video. You're like, we got the crew necks. And then yeah, like, that, that's just... the Henley. The Henley. We we made yeah. that fun little video. Yeah. Yeah, man. It, it's you're, it's cool to see a brand that doesn't take itself too seriously. Like, yeah. I, I always appreciate that. Ernie and I have been talking to people for like. The last three years, the last thirteen years, yes. <laughs> <laughs> we just joke about the time we would do this, but it's it's so cool to find people that are passionate about something and then like get behind it fully and just be fun and it's enjoyable because like uh, there's nothing nothing like a like people that just take themselves way too seriously about life and can't enjoy it. Like you got to think everybody's waking up every day going to a company like yours where you're like you're selling t-shirts that are making people feel more comfortable mm -hmm. like enjoying their day to life like their their day-to-day -day walking around time where they're interacting with people they're feeling comfortable because like i've been so I would, okay let's just get into this i've been a fat Man kid in. my whole life okay Same. Fat kid my whole can't life. say fat okay whatever <laughs> i'm saying it It was me i was my it was my yeah, journey, yeah. subjective to me okay so I, I was made fun of I, but then the cool thing is as i got older i played football so being big was cool. I was killing people. Yeah. I would murder being a big guy. He was. <laughs> and so, but I, I wasn't like unhealthy, like obese. Like I was active, athletic, but I've always been bigger. And uh, if you look at the men in our family, the, the genetics, like we're all big chested dudes. We're all big dudes. And we don't, we can't fit into the European style t-shirts. Like I, I don't fit mm -hmm. into that brand. And when it comes to like fashion and stuff, like that, that they're portrayed as people need to look a certain way to be that to wear a certain shirt, and yeah, uh, you know what I mean. So, it's always been a journey for me to find a certain brand to fit a shirt and then enjoy it to feel comfortable. So, when you guys are coming in every day and you guys are not taking yourself so seriously behind your brand and promoting this stuff, it's just like it comes across as just a lot of fun and it's pretty genuine. You know what I mean? Well, it it it, it really is the most genuine thing, and you. I mean, the story that you just told me is my exact story also. You know, like I, I grew up always the – and I'll say bigger because I don't want to get canceled. Uh, no, but I always grew up the bigger kid and, uh, and, and I played football. And I was really fortunate because I kind of found the secret sauce in being the bigger kid. And what I noticed is that if you make fun of yourself first, yep. it makes it a lot harder for them to make fun of you. Mm -hmm. um, so that's kind of the way I played it. And uh, growing up, you know, it's just always that kind of battle. And that's why, you know, if if you see on our T-shirts, I mean, we, we refer to ourselves as the biggest brand. And that's that's in an effort to try and like reclaim that word because growing up, being the biggest wasn't necessarily the best. Being the biggest was maybe being picked last for the sports team or maybe picked last in your social group or, you know, whatever it might be. Whereas now, you know, we're all grown ass men. And we're all proud to be the biggest in some way, shape or form. And uh, that's that's what we want to kind of reclaim. And touching on the fact that like kids growing up being bigger and it like the intention of this brand, like you said, is to make people feel more comfortable and confident. And if they want to be a, living a bit of a healthier lifestyle, maybe the T-shirt and the way they look in the mirror could help change that, you know. And we had a kid uh, come in with his mother to One Bone. We, we don't really have a storefront in Montreal, but our office is there. So sometimes mm -hmm. people pop in. And it was it was an amazing experience because for the first time, uh, an 11-year-old kid came through our doors and – the mom was expressing how, you know, it's very tough to find him clothing. And he, again, he was a bit of a bigger kid, great looking kid. I got to tell you, but, uh, you know, a little bit bigger and he put on our size zero, which is basically like a men's XL. Mm -hmm. And I basically like flashbacked 20 years or 25 years to myself and, and remembering what it was like to always be uncomfortable in my clothing. And I was just so pumped to see this kid, like, with this huge smile on his face. He literally put on 10, 15 different pieces of clothing and he looked incredible in all of them. And so it, it, it you know, it starts all the way back then and it comes to now where you just want to look good, you want to feel good and you want to be able to like walk out of your house feeling proud and, and comfortable. So here we are. Yeah, it's uh, it's a beautiful thing. Like, yeah. I, and I was just going to say that, like, it's not just men in like their older like 20s and 30s it's just like it's great for kids who are going through that those major processes and like uh their development in high school where yeah. they don't have 
like the confidence and that's like a huge thing for us as we like move forward as men like like to have just like a simple t-shirt that i can just throw on and then be like a greatness like yeah summer is always the hardest part being a okay we're gonna use bigger okay i'm not gonna use the, the other the f word <laughs> Yeah, uh, as a bigger guy, like I'll is bleep the, it. the summer. Okay, thanks. Yeah, do that. Please. I'll bleep you. Please, I you better. You. Yeah, I will. Yeah, um, give, give her any more work, would you? Yeah, yeah, I will. Yeah, 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 yeah. exactly. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> exactly. I'm doing yeah. all the work. No, I was kidding. Yeah. Um, like being that bigger kid in high school and having something like now, I don't know. So it, you're saying it's all online? There's no bricks and mortar. There are no bricks and mortar. There are a few stores that carry us, um, you know, in, including uh, actually Bull Rider in Brampton, which is uh, Bull Rider is the cannabis store or whatever that Drake and his team have started. Okay. Um, so they're carrying. Heard him. Uh, oh. Yeah. So they're carrying one bone. <laughs> um, yeah. He's. He, I don't know. It's he's, kinda. His name rhymes with Lake, I believe. Yeah. Um, so anyway, they're carrying it and a few stores around Montreal, but we, we've really kept it to online for us. We, we like the direct to consumer kind of model. We like to build these relationships and when we're delivering the product and we're the one dealing with the customers, it allows that opportunity. Mm -hmm. So from a fashion, uh, like a perspective, what has been yeah. the feedback with other companies like I was going to ask this question. It's pretty, I don't know. If it, so not to say, okay, how am I going to phrase this? So I don't come off as being a, a real doucher. Uh -huh. So not to say you're promoting, it's okay to be bigger. Not to say mm -hmm. that that's a part of your brand, but like sometimes it's super hard for guys who are like bigger in size to lose certain sizes. Like not all t-shirts fit the same. So what has been like the feedback from other types of companies where you're like, I'm we make we're making clothes for guys who don't fit into the regular like prototype. Has there been like feedback from like other companies or not? Like, not so much from other companies, but, uh, you know, every now and then you'll get somebody, like I said, hating in the comments on social media saying <laughs> like, you know, why are you promoting obesity? <laughs> you know, like and it's like if if you're really thinking that that's what's happening, um, then you need to kind of check yourself, you know, right. and. and Usually the haters in the comments are people who often have, you know, a bit of an issue maybe with themselves or insecurity or whatever. And what we are promoting is comfort and confidence, you know, and, and you should be able to feel that whether you're 150 pounds or 550 pounds, you know, like it's, it's all about that sort of inner feeling um, and that mindset. And again, if that feeling correlates to you, excited about maybe making a few healthier changes, then that's great. You know, I mean, for myself, I put on the t-shirt, I feel better. I, I, you know, I walk out of the house and I feel confident and it's those kinds of things that, you know, make you like pump your chest a little bit or flex the, the most common reaction when people put on a one bone t-shirt is they flex in the mirror. They're like, Oh my God, my, my arms look incredible. So, um, <laughs> you know, it's, it's that kind of thing that that's what we're promoting. Uh, mm -hmm. just be comfortable and confident no matter what size you are, because I heard a great quote is you have to love yourself in the body you're in now to, you know, potentially get to that next body that you'll love, whether it's, losing a little bit of weight or putting on a bit of muscle or, you know, whatever, whatever you're choosing to do, everyone kind of has that sort of approach. So, um, we even have intentions, um, we're, we're taking on more space, uh, come the middle of the year and we're going to be building out a content studio, which will have a gym in it. And the idea and the intent is to be creating content that, is very accessible to any kind of body. You know, we, we have so many different, um, options for like fitness and ways to get healthier, but similarly to the t-shirt where we've never really felt like, you know, the big man is, is providing a t-shirt for the big man or, you know, for anybody really, um, we're going to try and create some, some lifestyle content, some, some mental health, physical health components that people can make these little small changes in their life that maybe have uh, the biggest possible impact. So we're going to be doing stuff like that. And um, just, again, we have this community that's being built that, you know, 
to not offer that kind of service in any way, shape, or form would be doing a disservice to number one ourselves and mm-hmm. our community uh, at One Bone. Man, that's amazing. Yeah. So I got I got I got to jump back. So where did you? Uh, what were you DJing? Like what kind of things were you DJing? Oh, here we go. I, I was <laughs> sorry. Cat, I saw a squirrel, so I had to go. Yeah, 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 of course. Hey, listen, go chase that squirrel, Ernie. Uh, okay. I I was DJing. Uh, I started hmm, probably let's call it like early 2010s, let's say. And I started off emceeing um, and and doing like LMFAO type of music, <laughs> Flow Rider type of music. Um, you know, that was that when some kind good of, house came out in, in 2010. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That it was it was real like party anthems. And mm. then I partnered up with this uh, producer and we started to do, you know, heavier EDM, a little bit of dubstep, a little bit of Melbourne bounce, a little bit of G house, like all that kind of stuff. Um, and we toured and we, we had a huge following as well. Um, and then I think it was 2016 or so we went separate ways and, uh, and I was also a radio host here in Montreal. So I put a few more of my eggs in that basket and then did that for, uh, quite some time and now exclusively one bone. So I saw the beats headphones and I was going to ask, cause I saw that I'm like, cause I'm like, good man. He's got the beats. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I, like, I, I tried JBLs and I, I just oh, like the go. way the beats sound so much better. <laughs> Listen, Jer- oh, let the man talk some tech. <laughs> yeah. okay? I, I get off shit. on the tech too. Yeah, yeah. Um, I hit recording. That's all I've done all day. Yeah. Well, and you did a great job. I let didn't, me tell no, you. I didn't. It's still messing up, but I'm going to fix it later. <laughs> you better but, fix it later. Yeah. But anyway. uh, no, in terms, of, in terms of the tech, I think my favorite, I mean, I don't have a pair because they're crazy expensive, but I think my favorite pair of headphones that I've tried on are the AirPods uh, Pro Max mm. by mm. Apple. They're yeah. wireless. They're honestly, they're incredible. I, I've tried them on a buddy and like just definitely go into an Apple store and take them for a spin because they're they're beauty, but they're very expensive. Yeah, those used to be my old ones. They are uh, mm-hmm. as as the so people watching the video. So jump on YouTube if you're not uh, check out our video go. and you can get the full version here. They start with an A. I can't think of the name. Audio Technics. That's it. Audio Technics. So can, I had them. Can we link them? Where, where, where are we going to look for this YouTube oh, video? No, you're not. Oh, There's so no link. on YouTube, uh, you, you YouTube uh, the PM&A podcast. Um, that's where this video will be. Yeah. Uh, you'll see this handsome gentleman that we're talking to and all the people we've I, talked to in the I last I am five. gorgeous. I really yeah, don't. so, and that's the thing. Like, <laughs> so, oh. so we want resids from Beats? We want resids <laughs> no, from No, we're not getting tech. nothing. We're not getting nothing, bro. Yeah. We're just here for the craft beer and... We're here to promote other people. Anyway, um, can I ask another DJ question? Yeah, I, last one guys, I'm, I'm here to hang okay. out. So I don't want to interrupt. I don't want to interrupt a thought. No, no, go ahead, bro. So, like, what, what kind of equipment did you use when you were uh, like to to produce or to spin? Just like to spin wise. Uh, well, at first we were using a tractor controller. Yeah. Um, that was like way earlier on, and then uh as we started to like get into more and more clubs i mean the the general gear was just a pair of like pioneer cdjs uh, CDJs, you know and and we bring in our usb keys and away we go have you seen some of the new equipment coming out like the rav 7 i i've been pretty out of the game for like the past i would call it five years but i i stay in tune a little bit because as well we're you know i spoke about this content space the intention is to have a dj booth there and do some like pretty cool in-house events um so i'm looking i think what we'll probably end up doing is just a controller uh that people could come throw their keys in but yeah there's some really cool stuff going on yeah, yeah, I, uh, I follow a lot of mobile DJs online because I've been I've been doing the wedding event thing yeah, for about yeah. two, well, I, two to I three years. Up, I that's how I started my entertainment career. Really, was like weddings, bar mitzvahs, bat mitzvahs, like that kind of thing, Jewish uh, celebrations here, and uh, and weddings and corporate events mm-hmm. and stuff like that. What is what was the wedding like? What would you do for weddings? Like, did you have like? Because I've seen it in the state. It's weird though, because it's like you go you go from. <laughs> Yeah, you know, gotta go. Wanna go get a or something? No, you, so you guys. Yeah. People, like you have, you bring in, you bring in recessional, right? So you bring in the bride and groom. Yeah. They do their first dance, or they don't do their first dance, and yeah. then like I've seen in the states, like they do, like they dance right away, and then they have dinner, and then they dance again, and then yeah. they have like dessert, and then dance again, which I like, because what we do down here is, uh, 
you you get everything done you get all your formal stuff done you're done that by like seven o'clock and sometimes you're djing from like seven o'clock to like one o'clock and that is a just giant straight. set and you're kill you're killing people by 11 yeah, o'clock yeah. like, please play a slow song <laughs> No, we we definitely pace it out. We do like you know ceremony, and then we hop into like you know bringing in the uh, bride and groom, and then we go into like that first dance set. Like you said, either you know a slow song get the people going first dance. Yeah. You go into like a first course. You come back with a little father daughter action. You know, then you go into like some party music. Sometimes there's a band. Sometimes it's just a DJ. You know, uh, man. Jared, don't hate on this convo, okay? I like riffing not, on the wedding. Not, please, DJ please. Gigs. I'm not. I'm loving this actually. It's kind of cool <laughs> for Ernie to. Uh, it's just always fun to have for Ernie to talk. I was waiting for you to say that. Yeah. No, it's kind of, it's so no, nice with the guy so in the corner. The pressing buttons. About, if you think about podcasts in general, like yeah. sometimes people just want to talk about the one subject that obviously is around. Obviously, yeah. like someone comes in and wants it to. So let's say some guy hunts deer. So the whole conversation, you guys going to talk about deer? No, you're not. You're going to yeah. talk about 30 other things too because like that's a genuine conversation, which is kind of what we're, our whole deal is. Uh, some people just want to talk about one thing, but I'm just saying it's so like – got to say, right off the bat, you're a genuine freaking dude. So I knew right off the bat when we were texting back and forth, I told her, and I'm like, this is going to be what's up. Like we're going to have uh. a great conversation. Sometimes we've talked in the past about sometimes conversations are harder because it, it's hard to relate. Um, yeah. You know what I mean? We've talked to like Ashley Evan Smith, uh, the UFC fighter. Uh, yeah. We had a really great conversation. Ernie and I are not UFC fighters. Ernie right. and I are not athletes. We love UFC, but really it's a one-sided conversation about sure. something specific, right? It's just an awesome lady. Shout out to her. We will yeah. post it about her. Uh, but like, but like, it's just like so. I'm actually enjoying, and and that's kind of like the realness of it is just like it's so cool that we can just like just hang out and talk on the yeah. Podcast. I mean, listen, that's that's the. Uh, the beauty of content and the world of the internet, you know, and, and, yeah. and I think that as, as many terrible outcomes as it had, um, I think COVID kind of facilitated this even more because podcasts even before that was like, Oh, okay. We got to get the guests in the room kind of thing. Whereas mm -hmm. here it's like, you're in Toronto, I'm in Montreal, set up a quick Skype call and let's, let's just shoot it around. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that, and it's also given us opportunity to talk to people all over the world. Yeah, like exactly. Australia. Uh, where have we had like? Is Australia been the farthest? Alaska. Thing? Yeah. Oh yeah. Way north Alaska. We talked. I, to, you guys I spoke to somebody in Texas recently. Yeah. Or oh no? yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Um, he forgot. No, I yeah. always just like. That's so, why you like, keep we, me around, Ernie. No, no, no. We got we had like Evan, who's like out in Victoria, BC. We yeah. had uh, we have people in like the states, like all over the place. Like yeah. Like, you know, like just, and, cool. and that's the opportunity it makes. Like we even like we talked to someone from like the North Circle, like Arctic Circle, like that was probably mm -hmm. the coolest one we've mm -hmm. done. So I'm not sure if you're familiar with the show Life Below Zero. Coolest, like in terms of temperature, because I, I, I would hope now. It was I mean, I'm setting a new bar. I would hope. Like if you went outside to take a <laughs> pee, your dick might fall like, off. Yeah, like yeah, 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 yeah. Like it was like midstream. To, yeah, you know, yeah, I, yeah. I mean, like to actually connect with this person, like Sue. Yeah, from, it's like unreal. Like she, the way she explained it to us, she's like, "I'm literally shooting a signal off of the moon so I can talk to you to go around the Earth's curvature." Oh my! You know what I mean? But it's like, hard it's though because like, it's flat. Something so crazy just... like that. <laughs> I'm just like the idea that we can talk to anybody <clears throat> and just have a cool conversation. Sometimes we have to align up. Like we talked to, like the one girl from Australia. Like she has to talk to us tomorrow, right? At lunchtime, at our yeah. time, nine o'clock. You're living today. in the future, right? It's yeah. the future, bro. It's like, a, it's like a time zone or something. <laughs> but yeah, man, it's space shit. Yeah. Man. So I want to know, like, when you were touring. Like, yeah. were you noticing, like, were you taking things from, like, obviously, like, you weren't just staying in Montreal. You, you were going all over. Yeah. Like, fashion-wise, were you taking kind of examples from that and putting it into, like, the shirts that you were making as well? A little bit. I mean, uh, you know, at the time, um, a lot of my friends who were DJing who could buy, you know, just out of the mall, um, they were wearing, like, a lot of the longer tees, you know? That was, mm -hmm. that was really in style at that time. And... For that, it kind of worked for fashion and function for myself because it was longer. So when I, you know, when I would be telling people to put their hands up in the air at a party, my gut and my crack wasn't exposed, you know. So 
uh, that kind of worked out. And then we, you know, we shortened it up once one bone happened, but it's still a significantly longer T than you would, you would imagine just to make sure mm. that again, part of that comfort and confidence is like right now I'm sitting in an office chair. And normally if I wasn't wearing mm -hmm. one bone, I'd mm -hmm. always be worried that yeah, my man. crack would be exposed because yep. my shorts too, my shirt's too short. Now I'm fully covered. I'm feeling good. And so if anybody crept up behind me, it just looks like I'm wearing a, a shirt and a bomber instead of them looking and maybe laughing and being like, yeah, look at that guy's crack. Although beautiful <laughs> crack it is. Right. Still don't, right. Still that's don't Canadian. want it out there. You know? That's, that's high-end high Canadian crack right there. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. That's top tier, boys. All. I have a name. I have a name for it. I always tell my wife. I say that she baby gaps my shirt sometimes because <laughs> yeah. it's worse. Like you lift your hands up and it's like, oh, there goes the shirt. Yeah, exactly. Next question. How so? When people are like to wash your shirts, uh, do you have to just hang dry them, or do you prefer people to dry them? Like we we always recommend cold wash them in cold and yeah. then hang dry them because inevitably, no matter what, if cotton hits heat, it will shrink. But we do pre uh, pre treat all of our garments before production. So generally, in a t shirt, when you throw it into the dryer and Ernie gets baby gapped, it's like yep. shrinking probably about ten to twelve percent. Where because we treat all of our fabric beforehand, it's shrinking maybe like two to three percent. You know, so it still will shrink a little bit. Maybe it'll come up a little bit in length. That's pretty much it. Then we do have some shirts that aren't uh, including cotton and uh, some some pants, et cetera, that like you could put them in the dryer. No problem. They'll come out fine. You know, so mm. uh, but we all you know, the 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 big man concern is is a shirt going to end up in the dryer. Mm -hmm. So we always yeah. we always recommend keep them out. But, you know, sometimes they go in and, you know, even if somebody buys a size and they're like, oh, I wish it was just a hair smaller. Sometimes we'll tell them. Throw it in the dryer and it'll just come in a little bit and then it's perfect fit. Mm. So I'm just throwing it out there because these kind of another squirrel. Um, uh, of course. I haven't looked at your product line yet, but a sleeveless long like DJ shirt with. Yeah. Good idea. What? Bad idea. Sleeveless? Like a long we shirt like he was talking about, like the ones that like I, I'm, I'm going to reference like Timmy Trumpet. I follow him. Yeah. yeah Amazing yeah. artist. And, and he's like his vibe is like um, he's so cool. And Timmy he looks Trumpet's like he'd be like cute. such a fun conversation, right? We opened for Tim, Timmy Trumpet back in the day, and no uh, shit. but yeah, so so we have we have a tank top, and we're working on a sleeveless as well that should be coming out this summer. I made a lot of those. You could say I made T-shirts when I was a kid. No, you did not. Yeah, <laughs> you made belly tops. But yeah, He's no, an like entrepreneur, it's, Jared. Let him you, be. You don't even know. <laughs> you don't even know. I like Timmy I'll Trumpet because he's bro. actually I'll an artist, fly. right? I like Timmy yeah, Trumpet. Yeah. He's actually an artist. Like he yeah, plays cool. the, plays the trumpet. What? Oh yeah, yeah. Like in the middle of his gig, I'll show you some videos yeah. later. He actually oh, yeah. rip it. Yeah, yeah. At it, like a festival, like huge okay. festival, like thousands and thousands of people. Oh. Rips out Check a trumpet. Out. Let's rip it Super up. Super talented rip. guy. So I noticed a lot of your shirts and the whole brand's very clean. There's yeah. not a lot of graphics. Uh, what's the thinking behind that? Um, the thinking was that like if you ever went into a big and tall store, you know. Oh my it, God, no! I it, hated yeah, going like, to that. We it, okay. there were. There used to be like now, you know, I got I, I can't hate because a lot of people are making like a good push, you know, and so I, I like to support that anybody who's going to do anything for this big and tall movement, this size inclusive movement, like we're we're into it, you know, um, but there used to be two options. You go and shop as a bigger guy and you either look like a retiree from, you know, Boca Raton wearing like a, a, <laughs> a pink polo and some chinos or something, or you look like a kid in kindergarten wearing like a graphic tee, a loud graphic tee and like some plaid shorts, you know? Yeah. So we really wanted to clean the look up. Um, you know, we have very minimal branding on it. So it's not like loud, you know, one bone. There are some stuff where we have some louder prints as you become more and more familiar with the brand, but it's really that intention. It's, it's intended to be versatile. You could wear it on the weekend. You could wear it to the office. You could wear it to a date, you know, and you're not like representing this big yep. kind of tagline or something. You just look really clean and well put together. That's awesome that it's intentional that way. That's yeah. I, I thought that was going to be your answer, but um, cause it just makes more sense. Like bigger guys already stand out. We already yeah. send us. So like I like sometimes like I'm a type of person who wears bright colors. Like I'll wear sure. like 
orange and yellows and golds and like yeah. uh, red shirts. Like, and some colors don't look good on me. Like, I, like, I, like, like black obviously is like the number one color bigger guys wear. It washes, it doesn't wash us out. Gray is really yeah. hard to wear because it's really kind of, it really kind of like shows everything. It doesn't like, I don't know if people don't know this, but like. I, I've not, have you had a conversation like this where you're talking about your shirts and shit? Yeah. Yeah, okay, cool. My wife does it with me all the time. <laughs> okay. She's like, yeah. are you going to wear another black shirt today? So uh, yeah. 95% of my shirts are black. I have yeah. a couple gray shirts, but those shirts I wear underneath things. Um, like I wear like yellows and stuff, but doll, it kind of all depends on where I am with my weight. So if I'm heavier, yeah. go to my black extra large shirts. I have like 13,000 black extra large shirts from different yeah. brands that – I've kind of found and made my own, but um, it's like, what, what, what the heck of point am I trying to make here? Colors. Well, I think I think you're trying to say that, like, as a big man, we try try and shy away from like the loud. Yeah. But, but yeah. what I will say is, you know, like what we do is we try to like um, open up the loudness, like in maybe some some prints and some patterns um, that kind of go all over the shirt. Where what I've noticed, and again, before one bone. I mean, the custom made shirts that I was doing beforehand were also 95% black, you know, mm -hmm. but now that we've really like perfected the fit and the fabric, now I could throw on like a lavender or a dusty rose t-shirt, no problem. And it looks good because it fits and the fabric isn't something that's going to like cling to your body. And like you said, like with a gray yeah. t-shirt, like show all the curves yep. and everything you yep. don't want to be showing. Um, so now like, you know, we have plenty of, I, I'm wearing a gray bomber right now and, and it's like, it fits, it fits, it looks good. It's, it's structured, it stretches, but it bounces back. So we've really kind of like tried to, um, solve all the pain points that we would normally have. And that's yeah. why, like, in terms of like getting a little bit louder, telling you, there are a lot of guys in uh, the one bone world that they like to, you know, we already stand out, like you said, but you like mm. to stand out and look good. So now that the fit and the fabric is fine, we could. I'm wearing a crazy tie dye t shirt under this bomber, and it's just, it's an amazing, like, I don't, you could probably, it's, it was yeah, probably it, blocked man. by the mic, yeah, but like, beautiful. no, 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 yeah. You know, you get yeah. it. Um, so earthy tones and stuff, but, uh, you know, we could get a little bit louder now that it feels good and fits good. That's a cool that that that's a cool phrase right there. Now that we feel good and look good, we can get a little bit louder. Exactly. Oh, okay. hey, that was a tagline. Ernie, I'm uh, so time, time stamp I'm... this. We're gonna use that as a clip. <laughs> Thirty seconds. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Note it. <laughs> no, we're gonna use that as a video clip because that's just like a cool quote you just said. Um, sure. I'm like that when I buy shirts though, because I found a company online that I uh, I I actually I haven't looked up your company and I promise you I will today. Well, there's a reason why he does that. But Tell I, them I'm, I'm offended and I prefer you to no, take no, no, off no, no. shirt right I, now. I, I do, I do, I you do the reason, that. the reason he actually <laughs> do. doesn't, it's easier actually to come up with questions when we don't know as much, we of course. Find. but also we don't want to be completely idiotic and not know everything. So I come, I come prepared probably with like 50% and he comes with the other 50%, you know what I mean? So, but what were you saying? What company do you, oh, I don't know. I'm not saying the name of them, but Wait. I found them online and I love them. And I bought Daniel's like, why are you buying the same shirt? Cause I'm like, I don't find them that much that That's I really it. like them. Yeah. But yeah. so I bought like I bought the same shirt in different colors. And that's what dudes do. Like we all we buy I buy from the same brand because I know it's gonna fit. Yeah, I know it's gonna yeah, look yeah. good. And like I, I we don't always and like we're like that with everything. We like the same meals, we like the same cup of coffee. Yeah. We like we're pretty bare bones, we like the same kind of stuff. And especially if we're trying to just like jeans t shirt, you know what I mean? Or a hoodie. Like like so, it's like I'll tell you two things. Number one, I think this is a great time to to let your people know that if they use the code PMA podcast on onebone.com, they'll get 15% off. Okay. That's that's number one. That's Jeez, that's tough. that's for the fan. Number okay, bro. two, Ernie, what's gonna happen is you're gonna get a, a one bone t-shirt, and then you're gonna be like, man. I, I should have done this sooner because yeah. now all those t-shirts that I thought I loved a out. lot, <laughs> you're going to be like, oh, okay, well, I'll wear them as like a sleep shirt or something. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Like, I, I, honestly, I like the, you're going to, you're going to love it, man. It's, it's just, and, and again, it's no hate against any other company. It's no. uh, there, there's plenty of people doing great stuff. So, but I just, I know, I know what it's done for so many people, uh, yeah. the one bone t-shirt and, 
now we're doing pants and bombers and hoodies and like we're we're growing the line so you're gonna, See, you're already, gonna fall have, in love yeah and i already have a video in mind so now i'm gonna put the shirt on then i'm gonna go in my drawer and i'm gonna pay <laughs> sad music when they get thrown into a trash bag <laughs> no, no, no you're gonna exactly. play happy music no happy no, no music. but for the for the no for the, for the t-shirt yeah, like R.I.P. Be like, you wait, know? why are you throwing me out? Like, yeah, and then you're gonna be like, you suck. Sorry, yeah. now, bitch. <laughs> so funny story, just to kind of like that idea of like other branding and how other people make it. So the fun, like the kind of like where I was talking before at the beginning, saying how you guys make it fun and positive. So mm. a funny story, Ernie and I always tell people, and that we all, Ernie and I always joke around. So Ernie and I are, you obviously know we're brothers, but oh, I didn't know. Oh, you didn't know that. Yeah, no I way! Come on, I didn't, I didn't just met him 15 minutes ago. Yeah, we don't. We're not, we're not, we're not friends at all. No. Uh, so, but so at Ernie's wedding, we had to go and get oh, yeah. tailored up. And so Ernie and I always joke around, like the, the Fraser. This I was always your use. wedding. Was it my wedding? Yeah. Because remember, mine we went to that uh, boutique place in Kitchener. Oh, sorry. And they were all for free. Sorry. It was, it was, Boys. Boys. Don't it was worry. yours. I'm not, I'm, like, I'm not gonna fact check it. It could have been yeah. Ernie's and could have been no, Jerry's. Because I can tell you, we went to the place and it rhymes with ship shop shaler. So. <laughs> Your wedding or my wedding? Your wedding. Okay. So we go to this place and we're getting uh, we're getting uh, sized up. Yeah. And the dude's like, he looks Remember at us. Yeah. They almost like kicked us out. The guy's like, I don't know, guys. Uh, you guys are gonna have to. Uh, you guys have to go to, like a husky store. Mm. It's, like that's what he told us. Like. He looks like, and then Ernie and I just like look at each other, but like, God, bro, like, I was gonna pretty woman him, be like, I yeah. won't spend all my million yeah, dollars. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, exactly. You're like, gonna regret just, this. Yeah. Like, can you? Can, <laughs> I wish I had a bag to throw my shoulder. Yeah. <laughs> it was so impactful that Ernie and I just looked at each other, was like, oh man, <laughs> yeah. like, like oh, okay, we're too husky. So that's yeah. all the time that whenever yeah. and I already hang out, we're like, yeah. we sit in a chair or something. I'm like, I'm too husky for this chair. Yeah. Like, we just like, I call it, I call it big man certified. Yeah, I need, yeah, I need to get into it. Somebody opens up a little tiny little folding chair. I'm like, nah, that's not big yeah. man certified. I'm writing that down. That's a good yeah, 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 big man certified. You're welcome. Uh, and and just like that process of when, like you're already kind of nervous, right? Mm -hmm. Like, man, as a big kid going to the store and having to try clothes on because you want to see if it yeah. fits. Like that was like a, that was a nightmare for me. So you would get through that nightmare by like, going through that process, trying something on, and then repeat buying repeat yeah. buying that clothing yeah so for people who go on your website um how do you how do do they have to kind of like do like a quick check with like a measuring tape just to kind of like so what's the process with that like it's, finding the it's right always fit? it's always recommended um but we have a we have a really cool dynamic size guide on our website so basically oh, right. like we've got tons of guys with tons of different bodies ranging from like i said our size minus two to size seven and the reason why we did our sizing like that is because when we started the brand it was it was exclusively big and tall um so it started from size one to five which was like double xl to six x you know um and then as you know as things went on uh my partners are are both you know they're thinner guys and they were envious that like they didn't get to wear this awesome shirt. Oh. So, so it actually, it, it brought something to light where, you know, we would go shopping as bigger guys and in, in, in the mall or in stores and feel excluded. And we felt like it was a very important part of our ethos was to not exclude as many as we can, you know, and to include as many as possible. So that's, that's kind of where that happened. And so you could see bodies from size minus two, which is like a medium, and medium? then size yeah. seven, which is like an eight XL. And again, like we're gonna increase our size range on both spectrums probably. Um, but if you go, you could you could see guys who are like, let's call it myself. I'm on the website. I'm like six three, three hundred and twenty pounds. I normally wear a double to triple XL, and I, in one bone I wear a size two. So a guy who's in that, or then we have like a guy who is also five seven 280 or so who also wears a double or triple xl and he's also in a size two so it's a totally different body that you could kind of match up with and then mm. we also have a chat um on our website where mm. we're on there most of the time and if you ever have any questions about sizing you just send us a message and if you like if you tell me your height weight and your t-shirt size we'll tell you what size you are in one bone 
Wow. Did you? Were you guys yeah. like when you Customer when you size? Service, man. Yeah. yeah, when you size things though, like when you give it a name for the yeah. certain size, how much thought do you put into like to to give that a name? Well, you know the, what I mean. The like, sizing, would you say, like a one. Yeah. So the sizing was very important for us because again, like mm-hmm. psychologically. Um, at least I'll speak personally. And then I know, I know for a fact, because we have so many guys in the one bone world, but like it sucked, man, when you have to go in and try and find on the rack, like a three X, 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 L, you know, like it just, it already makes you feel worse yeah. about yourself. Yeah. So we wanted to make sure that like the categorization of sizes, first of all, removed all X or multiple XL. Um, because you should just be like this one number. And then we've also introduced pants, which our pants is a totally different sizing structure as well, where our t-shirts go from size minus two to size seven. And again, it goes to minus because when we first started the brand, it started at one. So in order to include smaller sizes, we had to go zero minus one minus two. And for pants, when we started a bit later, we were able to start at uh, you know, one number, or we decided to go with lettering for pants. So for example, like, you know, I'm, I'm a 42, let's say 42 ish. Um, and so I wear a size D in pants. So like my sizing in one bone is two D. So basically, yeah, yeah. Double D's. Uh, (laughs) so, so basically like, you know, the, the reason why we did that is because people's bodies are shaped totally differently, right? So, like, there could be a guy who's a size zero up top, which is an XL T-shirt, but he's got some bigger hips and, and you know, a little bit more junk in the trunk. So, he may, he may be the say, same size pant as me, but, say, uh, but like, two sizes less right. in a T-shirt. So, he would be a zero D, you know? And we go from uh, A size a to size h in uh in pants which is basically a range of like waist size 30 to 65 mm. yeah so accessory wise what all do you guys like i know you're doing pants and shirts do you guys do like hats, hats in that as stuff? well we we do have hats uh we you know we had some toques some beanies for the winter and we have some like dad caps and snapbacks and stuff for cool. the summer um but honestly, like our major focus right now yeah. is is the tops and the bottoms because right. like the the one thing about being a bigger guy is you can always accessorize. That's why yep. I, I'm I'm a sneakerhead. That's why I love a watch. That's why I love a hat because yep. it doesn't matter if you gain fifty or lose fifty, your hat and all that stuff is gonna stay the same size, you know? Yeah, it makes you feel good. Yeah. I think that's the the whole thing. Just I wanted to just touch on like the idea of how you're doing the sizing with the certain levels. Like even right off the bat, like knowing that like if I were to say, yeah, I'm a size five and no one bone shirt, that doesn't like that sounds okay. Like that's yeah. like just saying that. But like if someone were to say, what size of shirt are you? I'm always like, because if sometimes people like you know send us a shirt, I'm like, yeah, yeah, I'm an extra large. I'm yeah, extra large. And I, yeah. I remember being like for a while there when I was like trying to find out who I was as a young guy. I was like, I was a medium because I was like yeah. running every day and just being athletic and like, you know, it, so it's kind of like, yeah, I'm an extra large. You know what I mean? It's and that kind of like. It's it's an identifier that like, again, um, like when we were researching One Bone, the the average waist size in the States is a size 40, you know? If, if you go into a store, the likelihood of you finding a size 40 is quite slim to none. And I, yeah. that's, that's, a, that's a pun that you could use for, uh, for later, Ernie. Um, but uh, like, you, you, so it's an identifier. Slim that, to like, none, I just got yeah. it. I'm sorry. You're <laughs> welcome, world. <laughs> so, I, you know, it, it's, <laughs> it's, it's just forever. Don't, don't write that one down. That's just for us. That's for the, uh, the keep. <laughs> yeah. So, so it's an identifier that like just makes you uncomfortable. The fashion world, again, like what we notice is like, we're, this is one that you're going to want to write down. We're the majority, but we're treated like the minority in fashion. You know, we're like, uh, you go yeah. size extra small to XL. And that's like the, the majority of what you'll see in stores, but we're the majority body type, you know? Mm-hmm. So uh, anyway, the the identifiers were, were we just wanted to change that up. Psychologically, it bothered us. 
Yeah. You know what's weird though is you said that you guys were getting slack for like almost promoting, uh, like doing bigger sizes and stuff mm -hmm. like that. It's like, so what, what are you guys doing too? Like, are you going to other stores that sell like triple XL and stuff like that and hating on them as well? Like, no. I, yeah, at like, some point you got to stop reading the comments, but like, it's just like the, that that comments not valid. Yeah, it's you know that's the wonderful world of the internet. You know, it's not like, it's not like I'm gonna walk down the street and see Ernie walking across me and be like, hey, your beard is disgusting. You know, get that a lot. Just, actually. You're my wife says that. <laughs> you get that a lot. <laughs> but you're a perfect stranger. And and to me, my initial thing when I'm walking down the street, maybe because I'm a positive, you know, I like people, but like I would be walking down the street and like I would be more likely to be like, that's a strong beard you got there, my friend. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and, and so like it's it's a lot easier to do that face to face than to say that's a disgusting beard you got on your face. Uh -huh. But people are very happy to do that as they're those keyboard warriors back there. And, mm -hmm. you know, they're they're down selling in all sorts of hate. Yeah, they're down in the basement. And they're just, you know, <laughs> ripping into people for no good reason. And again, it's like it's not it's not what you would do to somebody in real life. And I. I, I've said this before. This is another great quote if you want Keep to. Uh, we're just, we're just tagging them out. Oh, yeah. So, like, the, the way I sort of equate hate uh, in, in digital comments is, like, if you're driving down the road and you're on the highway and you're trying to merge into the right-hand lane and it's stacked, there's just a crazy line of cars. You turn on that signal, everybody's going to do everything that they possibly can to not let you in. Well, if not, you roll down that no. window, now, not you, because you're you're in a standing I don't care gentleman. About my bumper. Yeah, so, yeah. Right. <laughs> we but but if that person rolls down that window and they stick out their hand and they look at that person in the face, human to human, and they're like, "Hey, do you mind if I get in?" I mean, if if somebody's gonna yeah. deny that, then they're a real prick. <laughs> but like, yeah, a real dude. Yeah. But like, but if I saw that, I'm like, "Yeah, man, go right ahead, no problem." So no problem. again, like. We're in these machines, right? And and it's computers and it's social media and it's hate. But I, I break it down to like the car, which is a super relatable thing where you're trying to merge into this thing, but you're in your machine and your machine is not human. And so in this machine, I could be as rude as I want to you and not let you in. But if you roll down that window and you become a human to me, come on in, bro. I got you. Let's you know, it. so there's the love. Yeah. yeah. No, that's a yeah, that's that's such a good take. Yeah. from that that idea like and i was gonna just comment on this too so going to those not not to throw shade on the bigger and tall like stores but like i don't know if like they put effort into things but you guys are really putting effort into it to making beautiful clothes like if people to go on your website mm -hmm. like your shirts your shirts look very like not like they look very smooth and they look yeah. like they look at like, like an expensive shirt they look they look like it's quality yeah. and like and for what me, do you mean it looks like an expensive shirt. Uh, you should, like, you gotta go on it and look. I know, like, but I'm just saying, just like, like it looks like just clean. And it's like I know nice. it's a towel, but it's okay. like if it's... you buy a shirt from like no, like from from uh, Lol Mart. If you go to yeah, Lol yeah, Mart yeah, and yeah. buy a T-shirt, yeah, and mall, you put it on, you can yeah. tell like the you can see the cotton fabric. Yeah, and I'm a kind of guy that like I I'll before I buy a piece of clothes, I'll kind of like put my hand on it. I'll touch it. I go. You like that. stiff yeah. shirts too? I do. I do like a yeah. stiff shirt. Yeah. So. So basically, what you're, I mean, first of all, that that was why fabric was such a priority for us because, again, we would go into the malls and as a bigger guy, I was literally just feeling fabric. Yeah. I was just yeah. feeling shirts and imagining what it would be like to wear it and would it be good on my body, would it not be good because it didn't fit me in the store, right? Yep. And and again, it's this is not to throw shade on the big and tall stores because there's, again – there are people doing it right out there. You know, we're, yeah, we're just sure. trying to join and be pioneers in the movement of inclusion. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, but having said that in researching, you know, our, our big and tall excursion, or as we like to call it now, big and all excursion, um, we went into these big and tall stores and I asked the question, I said, how many of these brands are brands that are exclusively made or made first for the big and tall man. And it's none of them, you nope. know, that they're all different brands that 
They have their regular sizes in the malls and then they have leftover fabric and then they just took their, you know, their pattern and they just graded it up from like a size medium or something. And so that's another big difference about what we do. Our size medium to XL is a totally different shirt pattern from the size essentially double XL and up because the body type is different. Mm -hmm. So yeah. that's what we were finding with big and tall stores at the time. Now, again, that's, it's four, it's about five years ago. So people have made moves. People are doing better out there. And again, like there's no shade. I, I, I won't throw shade on anybody because anybody who's, who's offering something, who's trying to help, then they're doing a great job, you know? Yeah. I, it always reminds me of just of me growing up and, uh, it's always a hard story to kind of think of, but I was, uh, yeah. dating a girl and she would, she said this phrase and it's kind of stuck in my mind and everybody knows there's a brand that's like, I think it's, I don't know if it's French Canadian. I'm not going to say the brand name, but it's like Le, and it's something else. And it's very European, um, in malls and stuff during the, the late 20,000s, like 20, 2004, 2005. And I remember her saying a real man can fit into those kinds of clothes. Oof. And I remember just like, since the onion soup one. Yep. Yeah, and I remember, it. and I remember just taking that as like a hard pill and being like, "Man, like, you're taking advice from somebody listen, that had a panic attack in the middle of the fucking road because a butterfly hit her." Hey, in the hey, face. hey, 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 Ernie, Let's no shade, no shade. So, uh, no, no, I'm not taking advice. As so, Good. as a Good. person, so as a young man who's trying to fit into society and also be like in a collective, yeah. Uh, being being like accepted by a woman that I I loved, mm -hmm. you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. So that was my thinking is like yeah, I don't I'm not adding up. I'm not adding up. You know what I mean? Like I'm not gonna cut it. And as someone who I was wanted the expectation for them to find me uh, attractive, and I also wanted them to accept me. That mm -hmm. phrasing of like who what defines as men, yeah. which we're all continually trying to define ourselves. Yeah. That simple phrase, like I always get emotional thinking about it as that young man. Like I wish I could go back and say, "Hey, man, that's not going to define you. Like this yeah. is just a moment, and like that's that's on them if they want to figure that out. If they want to, they like no, no, like I have, we have, I have friends that are skinny and tall and big and like they look great with their shirts off. I don't. I'm a big hairy son of a bitch. Like yeah, you know yeah. What I mean, he gets tranked when he walks out in public with his shirt off. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. like the fucking Bigfoot's back. Yeah, exactly. You know, <laughs> you know, you know <laughs> I'll say this. Um, first of all, you, you're you're right in like wishing or hoping that your yourself now that yeah. is far more comfortable in yourself and confident in yourself. Sure. You wish you could have told that younger self, yeah. like, hey man, it's all, it's all good. Having said that, you know, we we've been talking about a lot of the hate in the comments on One Bone, but there's also a lot of love. And the love that transpires in the comments, men and women alike, I, the, the favorite comment that we get, and, and we speak about it at One Bone HQ all the time, are the comments that they're like, I'm just here for the models. I'm just, I'm just looking, I'm just looking at the models. I don't care about the shirts even. I'm just looking at the models. And again, it's men and women just being attracted to these men, including myself as one of the models. But what I'm saying is as a kid, until I met my wife pretty much, I never thought yeah. of myself as attractive. Yep. I, you know, you, you go swimming with the shirt on you, you, yeah. you know, you're, or you're you surrounding. Yeah. Or I don't, don't go. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, I'm going to have too much food to eat. Yeah. You know so, I mean? so, you know, you, you go through life with those kinds of experiences and then all of a sudden you find someone in your life that pumps your tires. You find someone in your yeah, life buddy. that loves you unconditionally. And more than that, and I call my wife crazy all the time, she thinks I'm sexy. You know, yeah. I'm this big, you know, I'm a big guy. And Bro, you're again, a sexy guy. I'm saying it. Oh, well, thank you. What's and God up? bless all you. All the love, brother. But, but again, <laughs> as a kid, I never felt that for myself. So when somebody finally fell in love with me and was sexually attracted to me, I was like, man, this is so foreign to me. And so now that we're creating this like community of, of models and big men and, and, and just bigger people in general or every kind of body, the fact that we're like getting love like this and, and people are like pumping up these guys' tires, it's just an amazing feeling because as a kid, 
or until you have that one person to make that difference in your life, you don't feel like you're, you're a sexy person, you know, and now this is the way a lot of uh, the guys in the one bone community are feeling. So it's, yeah. it, it's, you know, it's just a t-shirt at the end of the day, but there's so much so to much it. More. it so God. much more, man. So it's, yeah. it's just amazing. Like, I, I think it has a lot to do with like, so I, I always use as a bigger guy, I look at other guys that are big and I see how are they doing what they're doing? Like I always look at action Bronson. You feel, oh. Are you familiar with the Bronson? Of the Bronson, 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 he's, Lino, he's looking really good right he's now. Looking, he great. looks, inc- I mean, he looked incredible before, but yeah, he's yeah. doing yeah. amazing. Things. So mm-hmm. I was watching an area with, with him. He's so fluid. He's so confident. He knows who he is. He's a yeah. guy who's lived a life. And so I remember watching an interview and like one of the one of the like one of the ladies was before he came on. She goes, "Man, I find him super sexy." Mm-hmm. And I was like, "Wait!" I was like, "Yeah, he's he's a bigger guy. Like it's, he's all tatted up. He's shaved it, head like me." And it's I'm just the thinking, swagger and the confidence, man. That's yeah. you know, yeah. and, and even for, from men to women or men to men or or whatever whatever sexual orientation you may be, the the real sex appeal comes from within it really does like it sounds cliche but that's really the like you could be what is stereotypically the ugliest person in the world but if you have a confidence to you and if you have a swagger to you and you give no can we swear here yeah you can say whatever the fuck you you want give no fucks at all that is sexy you know it's it's yeah it's a big dick energy yeah exactly it is that big dick energy and 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 that's really a state whether of or not you have one I know. exactly i'm a good size it's all you're good. a good average yeah, I'm, a listen, grown show I'm a grown man i i'm i mean depends on how much info you guys want but i, I the definition the of, now. of <laughs> grower is is what i encompass you know so yep yeah we're out there we're not so like you always like in the gym <laughs> class like like trying to change my shirt really quick, like in, in high school. Like yeah, quick, yeah, yeah. Quick, on, quick off. But then you got those guys that are just ripped. Everything yeah. looks like you're just like yeah, That's walking cool, around bro. the fucking gym. Yeah, go yeah. go take a shower. Never would I ever take a shower uh-huh. in high yeah. school. I could smell yeah. like dirty yeah. ass. Here, for the I'm, whole going week. Home. <laughs> I'm going home. And and again, imagine we had the the foresight, you know, to to be in that locker room. And rip off our shirt as quick as the guy with the muscles did, you know? And we're like, yeah, look at this, boys. Hey, you know? Hey, and, like, buddy. that that alone would, like, make you so much sexier, you know? Yep. So, anyway, but that, it's... But to not have that confidence, not to have that, that mm-hmm. gumph to kind of, like, be that way, a lot of guys our size growing up definitely don't have it. And those yeah. guys that did, they were funny. And they they stood out and yeah. having a having a piece of clothing that can just like make you feel that way, man. Yeah. That's what's up. I and, think that's what it yeah. is. Like you 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 are designing shirts, but at the end of the day, you are just designing confidence, right? Mm-hmm. Boom. So, boom. I mean, I'm I'm, I'm writing drop. that one down. Yeah, like, you you drop that, Mike. These are expensive, yeah. so I'm not dropping this. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Don't 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 drop these. I almost dropped mine the other day, and I almost had a panic attack. Yeah. So I want to know, like, where do you like now? Like mm. now that you guys have got things settled and, and running, just off the you know off the on into, the rails into, into the on fucking the rails. into the space that doesn't exist. Um, yeah. <laughs> where do you where do you guys now? Where do you get motivated for like designs and stuff like that? Um. Just just in terms of like things that we don't have in our personal wardrobe, you know, like things that uh, again, like like the bomber jacket, I'm wearing a, a pair of like sample pants that we're going to be releasing this summer that like it's just it's a lighter weight, like could be an athletic pant. But also if you wore a pair of fancy shoes and a sport jacket, nobody would know the wiser. And uh, it's just like, again, it's a pant that I've never had in my wardrobe um, because I haven't found it in my size period. So just that's, that's really where our direction comes from, like the evolution of our brand. And uh, you know, we're, we're born and raised here in Montreal up until two months ago, everything that we made was made in Montreal now there's going to, you know, as we're growing and as we want to evolve the brand, there are, un- I mean, unfortunately, unfortunately, some things that we will have to produce overseas because the yeah, more production, 
Yeah. The more technical we get, the more impossible it will be to do here. Um, it becomes far too expensive unless we wanted to charge like, you know, 1200 bucks for a, a t-shirt, you know what I mean? Yeah. So it becomes so, so hard to do from a financial standpoint because they don't have the same machines as overseas. So the more technical we get, we're going to get into some overseas stuff, but as much as we could keep a bulk of our production in Montreal, we're going to be happy. So, yeah. Um, so what do you like, just, uh, I just want to ask what is like the, cl the cloth based on and what's like the fabric just so people who are kind of like shirt people who enjoy yeah. a certain kind of cloth. What's uh, so what's involved in the, the, the fabric? Well, our, our basic t-shirt is like a 95% cotton, 5% spandex. Um, and nice. again, like we, we felt a million different materials yeah. to nail mm -hmm. it. Um, and so now we produce all of our own fabric and it's thick enough, but thin enough to breathe, uh, you know, stretchy enough with the spandex to like, you know, stretch if you need it to stretch, but also kind of snaps back to, to be a structured piece instead yep. of like, you know, you know, the feeling when you like oh, roll yeah. up a sleeve or you like give the old, you know, big men push out or, you know, yep. of the t-shirt. Yep. Um, so like normally it would like just stay kind of like loose and the neck would end up feeling loose oh, and like that, you, you know, all that. that life. So all of our fabrics are really intended to like snap back into place um, and, and not kind of like hug the, uh, the things Heart. that you don't yep. want it hugged, you know? Right. Isn't that called bacon neck? Isn't that what when the shirt <laughs> like Yeah. That? Yeah. Like when it like, yeah. Mm, Offs around. Kind of does, kind of does the wave. Yeah, yeah, that. yeah. My biggest pet peeve is people touching my shirt and stretching mm -hmm. it because yeah. I like it to look tight and I like it to look firm. And like yeah. I really, it's like a, it's like a, I don't even know what to call it. It's just security like security blanket. Yeah, yeah. For me, no, no, it's not a security blanket. <laughs> I just mean it's like a, it's like a tick I have. I don't like people touching my clothes. Like yeah, I have yeah, like yeah. a thing where I don't like. I'm like, don't touch me. Like I'm not yeah, sure. Like yeah. people aren't touching me all the time. I just mean like people walk up and just be like. <laughs> Like, and I also like if I wear like a long sleeve t-shirt, yeah. I love those. Like, I don't like the wrist to be like a uh, wizard. Yeah. Like, Think like <laughs> sleeve of wizard. Yeah, I don't want it to be like, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> <laughs> like the Larry David Curb Your Enthusiasm. Yeah, I, so I don't, I'm like kind of pinicky. So yeah, like, it's of course, we all know. are, man. Yeah. So it's cool to know that like, that's what you guys do. I'm going to have to get one of your shirts, bro. What's uh, a, yeah, can I ask? I so from it. like price point to like, like, so... Go on the website. Yeah, okay, I will. But I need to know. What do you want to know, man? I'm I want right to know here. how much. How much is like a basic T-shirt to it, ship? It's and, look. Like, it's you guys it's like a definitely it. We don't have a subscription. It's definitely like it's a premium T-shirt. You know, like and the yeah. way I sort of looked at it is like I used to go into like the stores and and buy T-shirts that fit me, and they would be like ten bucks a pop, and I would wear them like three or four times, it's done. and then. And then like either I would be super lazy and wear like a, a poor fitting t-shirt because it got mangled in the wash or I would throw it out and go get another one, you know? Yep. Um, so it's definitely a premium price t-shirt uh, or like mid to premium, let's say. We, we have different elevated products and fabrics that we use that like and, – and, and because it's all treated – but realistically speaking, you could get our basic t-shirt for 55 bucks. Yep. And again, like this is a T-shirt that will last you forever. You know, I yeah. mean, mm -hmm. I mean, actually, everything that I'm wearing is pretty brand new because I'm wearing like our new collection and stuff. But I have T-shirts that I have worn literally since day one of starting One Bone, and I have I I've even brought T-shirts like into my house routine. Where you know you have your house yep. shirt, like where yep. you change out of yep, whatever bro. you were wearing, and you wear that same shirt like every day, throw it in the wash. Same shirt every day, throw it in the wash. I have t shirts from One Bone that I've literally washed probably at this point like a thousand times, and they still feel like the same day I took it out of the package. So, like, yep. you could get 55 bucks, and then we have like some, some, like spring type of uh you know over layers and stuff like that like we have this piece called the trench hoodie and it's like this teddy fabric it's amazing it like it's got this full hood and a shawl like it's incredible and so like that's our most expensive piece mm -hmm. and it's a it's really a jacket at like 220 bucks you know yeah, it's mm -hmm. a jacket yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah exactly so our hoodies are in the neighborhood of like 100 or 150 and 
it's it's all kind of that price point and you know yeah. as we evolve and get new products and it'll we're trying to we're trying to be as as cost conscious as possible but at the end of the day we're using a lot more fabric than the mm -hmm. average clothing line mm -hmm. uh we're treating it a certain way and 95 percent of it is made in montreal which is more expensive as well and and we what we've experienced is like people are very proud uh even in the states they're proud that it's like made in north america mostly and uh so yeah that's that's the rundown well, for if, as a guy like that yeah. makes sense to me i'm gonna spend that kind of money mm -hmm. like yeah. i there's t-shirts that i wish would just last forever yeah you know what i mean and like i i get kind of stinky like so there will be a shirt like this is my work shirt this is my yeah. shirt to go out this of is my shirt for sitting at home. Like I have yeah. a couple different shirts. I actually have three different piles in my drawer. So like this, like on my shelf, I have like shirts are just hanging out. Yep. Shirts are going out. Yeah. And so the shirts that I go out, I very w rarely wear because I don't want to wear them too much. So if I know that I'm going to spend 50 bucks on a shirt, that's going to last me a long time. It's an investment in my yeah, future. Yeah. No I, 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 I agree, man. And, and the way I sort of look at it and like what often happens with, with uh, a lot of our customers, like they'll come in and our shipping super fast. So they'll, they'll come in, they'll order something online, let's say on a Monday, right? And they'll order like one or two t-shirts. I got to try this out before I, I dive in because like, is it really what they're saying in the ad? Is it really this good? They'll try it on a Monday They'll or they'll order on a Monday. They'll get it by like Tuesday or Wednesday, you know? Oh, wow. And then what's ended up happening is like by Thursday, Friday, another order for like yeah. three, four, five, six hundred bucks is coming in because they're like, okay, it's done. I'm converting the whole closet. Oh. I'm gonna have, you know, I'm convert. I'm gonna have like seven to ten of these t-shirts like on the rotation, and that's all I need. You know? Yeah. I mean, obviously, obviously, as one of the co-founders of the brand, I exclusively wear one bone. But if I wasn't and I stumbled upon this brand. Then for me, like I would do the same thing. I would probably like re up once a year. I'd I you know do like a big order, get all my fresh teas, and then we also do these really cool things. We drop something new every two weeks. So every two weeks, there's something new coming. Last week we dropped some tie dye hoodies and this this essential bomber that I'm wearing, and then next week we're releasing three new color tie dye t shirts. So one of which I'm wearing, and so again like. You, you could jump on it. You could not jump on it. Sometimes we do very limited edition stuff as well because we'll find a certain amount of fabric. We'll mm -hmm. cut it all in, whether it's a bomber, whether it's a t-shirt, whether it's a pair of pants. And like if if it's gone by tomorrow, it's gone and it's not coming back. So a lot of our customers have like understood that there's this like, we, we, we call it kind of like an accessible hype beast kind of mentality where – at mm -hmm. any given point, you could come in and buy our standard T-shirts, buy our standard hoodies, buy a few different things. But when we drop something, there is the uh, perhaps there's the potential that it will be limited, you know. So people will come in right away. They'll buy it on the drop yeah. and they'll have it. And, you know, it's it's basically a physical NFT if you if you could put yeah. it that way, yeah, you know, like sense. it's it's like you, you yep. got this T-shirt, you're in, you know. And based off of the quality of it, you really got it. For a while, mm -hmm. like, yeah, I'm gonna have to. I don't know what the fuck I'm doing with all my shit in my closet. I guarantee you, I don't even wear like three quarters. Of I get so I I purge. If I don't wear something in a year, uh I I gotta get better at that. There's there's pieces like that are still in my closet that like they again they still fit me so well. They still feel like the first day. So it's like hard to like get rid of that. Mm -hmm. But uh my wife is not a fan you know yeah, she's like, yeah. is oh, my on. wife's not too happy about yeah, my class not happy. like let that uh, well, i can't do it no, i'm not gonna do it no, so gonna... i know I that do an amazing like... borat impression if you really yeah, want i'm so glad that the, the like sleeve of wizard yes, landed yeah. very well I'm my like... crumb is like sleeve of wizard very nice <laughs> yak shamesh arnie <laughs> you like I'm... it very yeah. nice. How much? I, I like it. Yeah. I like it. We're, <laughs> I we're, said that to the guy at work yesterday. No, you did. <laughs> I see. I, I'm not surprised. <laughs> I have a lot of clothes that like I'll keep just in case I get skinnier too. Like I'm just like, well, like I'm like I used to look good in this the shirt, and hopefully again I will. You know what I mean? So there's that. There's there's lots of like clothes going around, but um, 
if let's say someone doesn't like your shirt, but you yeah. they, you send it out, someone picks yeah. it up, and they're just yeah. like, eh, not for me. Free exchanges and returns, no problem. Man, we we ex- service, dude. We man, we exchange until the fit is perfect, and generally, generally, it is just for an exchange. Like our our return rate is like crazy low. It's it's mm. amazing. Um, and, and if by chance, like one out of like a thousand people don't like it, man, send it back. Here's your money. Thank you so much for trying it out. If you have anybody that you think would love it, you know, send them this discount code, you know, like bring them in. Yeah. We, we want you, we want your friend. If you're not, if you're not for one, but we want your friend, you know? So yeah. there, there's no hard feelings. Look, the bottom line is like, we say it's made for everybody, but at the end of the day, it's, you know, it's up to your taste. It's up to your thing. There's also like a learning curve essentially to put it on a one bone t-shirt. The length is a learning curve. Like mm-hmm. some people will put it on and we have guys who are like, you know, five foot, like, and, and, and five foot. And we have Shaq wearing one bone. So seven, two, you know, like well, you got Shaq wearing one bone. Shaq is wearing one bone. Indeed. <laughs> Really? You could keep that jaw dropped a little longer, my friend. I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah, wow. yeah, yeah. No, we have we have Shaq. We have uh, a bunch of Super Bowl champs wearing one bone. We have amazing artists and DJs and uh, athletes rocking it. And and Man. then more, more importantly for us is like we have thousands upon thousands of guys wearing one bone, much like yeah. yourself and me, just feeling more comfortable and confident. So it's... It's an amazing thing, boys. We're doing something real cool over here. Yeah, you are. You are. Doing <laughs> cool. well, I think. I think one guy from the PMA podcast is going to be wearing a pretty regular on the podcast. I think. There we go. Better. Yeah, I will. You better. Hell yeah, man. I got to so, clean out my closet. Though. <laughs> so people can check out your your brand on yes. like multiple stuff, like Instagram. Yes. Like, yes. let people know kind of how to get a hold. All of right, onebone.com If you want to change your life with with your clothing. Uh, and, and one bone brand on, you know, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, all that jazz. Um, and send us a DM if you have any size questions or whatever, just leave some love in the comments, preferably no hate, but you know, Hey, what, what, what's anything? The hate makes no sense. Like, why do you want to hate on some people that want to be happy? Why? Like, you, <coughs> actually, there are some, and we're not going to get into it. I think but, the hate yeah, makes, we are. I, I get a kick out of them. I, I, I like, love it. Yeah, I do too. I think it's hilarious. You know, the funny thing is, is Ernie and I have been doing this for 14, no, I'm thir- 47 three. years. <laughs> we were doing this podcast for so long. 73 years. Never. It's been a hell of a ride. We have <laughs> never had a single piece of hate. Because we're yes. literally promoting positivity. That's the literal tagline of the podcast is we're promoting stories about people and the, the successes and the downfalls and what makes people happy and it makes people successful in all walks of life. Yeah. We have never had um, – I think the only you – know, at the beginning, we only had someone say, hey, maybe have more ladies on. Let's have a oh, let's have conversation. And we have. Yeah. And we yeah. celebrated that a couple weeks ago with the uh, International Women's Day, and we promoted that. And it was mm-hmm. it's so cool to have a lot of those stories and um, things like that. But getting back to that idea, like I think I think the cool thing is when people promote positivity, it, it, like the hate is very limited, mm-hmm. and it's yeah. almost like it's like why are you even doing this? Like why would I you? Think, I like, think it's also I think it's also because like we're a brand and a business, whereas you know if if you're creating and you're you're outputting positivity it, it it's almost as though like there's no the ulterior pop- uh, there's no ulterior motive right yeah whereas if you're a brand in a business right it's it's a business at the end of the day so it doesn't matter as much positivity as you're promoting there's still like this other motive so i think maybe that's what attaches the hate sure. a little bit more you know they're like oh well you're you're making money off this and that it's like well yeah we're we're trying to help as many people as possible but you can't do that unless you're you're trying to make some money and turn it back into your business yeah. so i think it's maybe that and also i mean look at you boys who's going to say a negative thing about you ah that's uh, very kind yeah, we'll what we'll put you on a piece of wood yeah, yeah, yeah. Please, please do. What what, what does I, PMNA stand for? Positive mental attitude. PMNA podcast was taken, so I added the end. 
PMA podcast. Uh, yeah. Well, it wasn't really. We know actually we know the guy who okay. who, who owns it. We, yeah. Like I don't know him personally, but I know of him. We have yeah. friends that we've talked to that actually know the guy. Um, but I just saw so many that were like PMA. No, like there, there was, was one. No, there but there's a couple though. Now, now there are. Now there are. There's a bunch. So I was but like, we are leading the trend yeah. for the Absolutely. last 47 years. <laughs> yeah. You had it. You had a good two year run, eh? Just yeah. not a not a consecutive run. No. Oh, no. Two years oh. spread out out of forty-seven years. Yeah, you know, that. two to two to twenty. We're around yeah, yeah. that range. It's just it's it's cool how we always end up kind of talking about positivity back on mm. with most of the conversations we have here and like and the people that wake up and choose that other side of the street. It's like, what do you got going on, man? Like, what life you got going on? Like, are you going through some struggles? And like, it's yeah. cool that you said before you've had people that have like thrown a little bit of shade, but then you've turned them around. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, that's cool. It's like, put on a one bone shirt and tell me that you're still angry. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. We we've even had like people and hopefully this doesn't promote too much negativity in our comments, but like <laughs> we've, we've had guys who were like so negative in our comments and we'll send them a direct message and just be like, man, what size t-shirt do you wear? And what's, you know, and, and we have just sent them a shirt mm -hmm. and then they have responded like, and again, like a lot of these kinds of guys are our biggest customers now, you know, That's because better. they're like, it's also, you know, you're, you're buying something online. It's like, is it your, your, should I trust this new brand? Should I not? Is it a scam? Is it a, this is it, so it's like, it's a little bit tough when it comes to that you know it's like wh who is who are these people mm -hmm. um but like as you see with our our marketing and our videos and our branding and stuff like the bottom line is we're just a couple of boys who like to wear a good fit and we wanted to share that with as many people as possible like that's that's yep. really the the end all be all of what it mm -hmm. is and you know, the more content that we put out, the more opportunities uh, I get or we get to to share conversation like this. You know, hopefully if it's just one more person that heard about One Bone and, and realized like, ah, these are some good dudes and they, they create a great product and they really care. Then, then you know, the podcast, the PMNA podcast did what we needed it to do, baby. It's going to do what you need to do, baby. 100%. 1,000%. <laughs> <laughs> Adam, this has been a, a really cool conversation, and I it's hope great. that I hope that we can connect again. Uh, we always like to do that with people, and like it's funny. I don't know if other podcasts do this, but we really keep everybody on like a an idea of like a rolodex where we just yeah, yeah, yeah. continually talk with every single person we hang out with on here. Like I'm, I'm like Ernie and I are always messaging, "What's up, man?" Anything yeah. that got going on, we're always promoting. We're always just like, like it's not just like one conversation and done. We continue yeah. this like cool relationship. Cause that's just how Ernie and I are like. We're not just like, oh, we're just gonna talk to this nobody we don't know, and like, and then just never talk to them again. Like, we're talking to people from all walks of life, and mm -hmm. this has just been a cool conversation. Like, yeah, he's not a doucher, and then you realize he's not a hey, doucher. Yeah, he's, oh, not, he's not a doucher. He's not a karate eh? of the garage. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> did we just become best friends? Yeah, we, we did. Yeah, we nice. did. Nice, man. Uh, yeah, boys. Uh, this was a really amazing time, and and again, like, hopefully that one or uh, you know, I mean the millions of people listening right now uh, got what they needed to get out of, uh, you know, a little bit of positivity. And yeah. uh, when we have the new creative space here in Montreal, you guys come down and take a little look oh, yeah. around and create a little content yourselves and have a good time. And and Buddy. maybe we'll see each other in Toronto in April. We will. We yes. will. We yes. will. Yeah. Definitely let us know. And get that done. You said yeah. a, a code before. You want to let yes. people know what that is? Then uh, we well, didn't. This, I, this is why. Wait, what's going on? True. Here? I I I said PMA podcast because I can't put an ampersand in the no, code. No, that's yeah. PMA so podcast. PMA podcast. Fifteen percent off because of the boys. And uh, you know, try a little, try a great T-shirt. Try it out. Percent off, kids yeah. and boys. Try it out. Yeah, exactly. All right, man. Try try it out. Yeah. Try it out. <laughs> I wonder how many people got that reference. I don't know. I hope they do. Okay. Dude, Adam, thank you again. T tell the people what the reference is in case they feel like they oh, missed it. Your, your mom sells podcasts. Yeah. Try oh, it out. Man, that's it, the only one I can feel safe saying on here. Yep. We're not yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. They're, try they're it out. Great. Try, you got to try it out. Got to follow Proto, bro. Got to follow Proto. <laughs> they're great. The camera through the fence. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> man, 
Uh, Adam, we're going to connect oh, in a little bit. I want to keep this conversation going. And uh, thanks for your time, buddy. Yeah, thank you very much. I, uh, this yeah. was a lot of fun. Yeah. Thank you, guys. All right. Just hang on a second.